She says, you know what sucks? Because of our unwillingness to pass policy that protects our election integrity, I immediately think the Green Party votes to- tonight's are Russian meddling. Why else would anyone cast a protest vote in Ohio when there's so much at stake? <laughs> so much at stake. That's so delusional. Like, what is a protest vote? What's your vote <laughs> worth? If everyone votes and they all vote green, is that a protest vote? Like, it's like, if, he, is it possible that the Green Party can win? Like, do you have no faith? So what they're doing is essentially just bowing down to a rigged system, saying the system's rigged, so just vote for side B, even though side A and B are funded by the same people. I know, I know, but ideologically, side B is our side. That's what she's saying. So what they've gone past, so now the hashtag resistance have gone beyond voter shaming, and now what they're actually doing is democracy shaming. You yes. don't get to participate in right. democracy. Exactly. And those people, so let me tell you something. When people say, oh, you know, the Greens take away vote. I would not have voted in the presidential election if I did not have the opportunity to vote for uh, the Green Party. Right. So those votes, you don't own those votes. The way electoral politics works is that if you don't have enough votes to win, you have to go get them, right. and you have to appeal to those votes, but they don't have an appeal to voters, the Democratic Party. They have nothing, and so what they have left is fear and voter shaming, and that's it. Now they're actually shaming democracy. Well, you would also think that by the t- after we've gotten through this past election where no one, literally no one in the mainstream media other than maybe Fox News predicted that Trump was going to win, no one. They all were 100% sure right. that Hillary was going to win. They were they were had in the 90% range of probability <laughs> yes, of her right. winning, and they were displaying it on CNN. So they know that that's wrong. So why would someone think that a Green Party candidate has to be, or a Libertarian candidate, has to be a protest vote? Why can't it be a real vote at this point? When you're talking about the kind of social media outreach that, that is capable today, that's possible today. Well, you, a person who has some really good points and has a real, look at this woman who won in New York, the 28 year old girl is a democratic socialist. I like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yes. Look, if that doesn't tell you, like this world is changing in a radical way and upstarts and, and, and people who are huge underdogs have the possibility of winning. It's not a protest vote. It's an actual vote. And if everybody <laughs> who thinks this way votes towards that protest vote, guess what? They win. That's right. That's what it is. So I used to uh, have a joke. Where I would say, uh, no, you can't vote for uh, you can't vote for a third party candidate until a lot of people are already voting for a third party candidate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what they're just, saying. You can't vote for them. They have no chance to win. So you have to wait till a lot of people are already so that you they, yeah. people don't understand that inherent contradiction. And by the way, people, uh, maybe if you spent a tenth of the energy trying to excite the half of the country that doesn't vote. Yeah. As you do and trying to sh- voter shame progressives or Green Party or environmentalists for not giving you their vote, which you do not fucking own. Right. Exactly. If you were to spend a tenth of the energy trying to excite people who don't participate to participate instead of shaming the people who do participate, maybe you'd get somewhere. It's also this reluctance to admit that both sides are corrupt is this very strange thing that exists on people who operate within this narrow bandwidth. And this narrow bandwidth is whatever side you're on, whether it's you're on the right or the left, this is the side that you want to win. And it's the right side, and they're the good people. And the other side, even though, well, even though our side does wrong, this side does worse. And they, they operate in this real narrow bandwidth. This is why she would think something that's possibly negative for her side is a protest vote instead of being your actual feelings on the issue. And if these people really cared about voting integrity, wouldn't they want paper ballots? If they really cared about uh, voter integrity, wouldn't they want ranked choice voting? Wouldn't they want that? Then you don't have don't you don't you don't have to worry about this. Ranked choice voting? Ranked choice so they have it in Maine now. Right. So uh, it's where so, you know, you you get to this is my first choice. This is my second choice. This is my third choice. Oh. So you don't get to. So it, it, it eliminates that you're a spoiler. Oh, right. Interesting. Yeah. So um, and, and they voted in in Maine and the politicians, of course, don't want it. So they got yeah. rid of it. Uh, and they had the court reinstate it. They had to, I think it's happened twice now. How does it work in terms of like say if you're going to vote for uh, you know the governor of Maine, you have a first choice, a second choice, and yeah, a let's third say, choice. Let's say there's three choices. Right. So you get to you get to say well let's say let's say if your first choice was a Green Party candidate, mm-hmm. you go okay that's my first choice, but my second choice would be the Democrat. 
So in case and my of third a, choice would be you know maybe nobody. And so does like second choice have different points? So if you, if your first choice doesn't get enough votes to mm-hmm. win, then your second choice goes right. So uh. that's how it works. So you're never wasting your vote. And you know what's ironic is that, and I might have you know there's been people who can better explain that. So please, I know people are gonna be, Jamie the way better way to say that. I, I'm sure there's better ways. But the thing that kills me is that Bernie Sanders, his whole career was about being an independent. And I have videotapes of him saying, you know what kills me is I go out and I do, I do these talks and I take, talk to the people, they come up to me after these debates and they say, you know, I like what you said and uh, you, you make the most sense, uh, but I can't vote for you because you're never going to win. I hate that. They go, I want to waste my vote. Oh, if there's one thing I hate, more than that, that phrase, waste your vote. Mm. This was what he was saying his entire career until now. And I want to know why. I want to know what the hell does Bernie Sanders in 2018 know that Bernie Sanders in 2006 didn't know, and Bernie Sanders in 1996 doesn't know. And he tells everybody you got to run. And he's you know getting people to come into the Democratic Party, which is actively cheating them. Yet he still cheating runs, him and him. Yeah. Yet he still runs as an independent in Maine. I mean in Vermont, he still runs. Everybody's saying you guy you can't. Do, he gets to run as an independent. He gets to run as an independent while representing the Democratic Party. Yes. Sometimes yes. So they have a special sweetheart deal. In- so what is he saying when he said, is he saying now that protest votes are a waste? Like, what is he saying? He told everybody to vote for Hillary. He told, I mean, he's not starting a third party. And, you know, his whole life he was like, he said that we have to have, the the, the verbiage he used one time I saw him was that, uh, you know, uh, Jesse Jackson's correct. We need, we need a rainbow coalition of people. Uh, but it has to happen outside of the Democratic Party. He said that. That was him. So we have to have a progressive coalition, but it has to happen outside. And who better to lead it but Bernie Sanders? So that's why it's hard to start a third party, because you need people who are already po- famous and popular and uh, in government. So if he left and he got, say, Tulsi Gabbard and Nina Turner and Elka- Alexandria ocasio Cord, and he got a bunch of people that are super popular on the left, we'd have a third party at, that would be polling at 10, 15 percent. And now the Democrats would have to form a coalition instead of what they're doing now, which is ignoring progressives. After she uh, cheated Bernie Sanders, after the Democrats cheated Bernie Sanders in the primary, Hillary Clinton didn't choose Bernie Sanders as her vice president, as an olive branch. She didn't choose Elizabeth Warren as an olive branch. She went to her right. She got Tim Kaine, who's to the right of her, who's Mm. anti-union, who's everything bad thing you want, and a corporate Democrat. He's pro-wall, the whole deal. She went, so just, so if we had a third party that actually polled at 10 or 15 percent, they would have to, they couldn't do that anymore. They'd have to, they'd have to do a thing called Joe voter outreach instead of voter shaming, or it's what it's devolved to now, which is democracy shaming. They're literally shaming people for participating in democracy. You don't get to participate in democracy because you're a third party. Party. Well, fuck you. That's called democracy. And so, yes, I do. And I get to vote my conscience. And we'll be right back. 